This is the real Tom Rose, and I like to think of this type of question as a uh, uh, don't freak out and follow directions type of question. So first of all, this, this, let's just read through it together. And this question has tons and tons of rules in it, right? So they want you to find the biggest positive integer for k for which the product of this quantity and that quantity will be more rules, non-zero, and the quantities will have opposite signs. Huh. So there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rules that you need to apply here, and we need to keep track of all of them. Um, some of them I'm gonna keep track of in my head. So for example, po k needs to be positive integers. I'll just think of like, okay, those are kind of normal-ish numbers. I'm gonna look for the biggest possible thing for k. And the things I need to track are um, uh, this number, seven minus k, and this number, 18 minus k. So let me. So you don't have to do all of this out yourself, but let me draw you a little chart to show you what's in my head. I'm gonna keep track of k, um, seven minus k, and 18 minus k. And let's try, we need positive integers. Let's just plug in uh, the simplest one, which is plug in one for k. And we'll get seven minus one is six, and 18 minus one is 17. So let's check all the rules. Um, was k a positive integer? Yes. Um, did we track the product of, should we track seven minus k? Yes. Do we track 18 minus k? Yes. Um, is the product of those non-zero? So six, six times 17 is some non-zero number, so we meet that standard. And by the way, that'll always be true as long as neither of these numbers is zero, right? That's the only way to make the product zero is if one of these two is zero. And also the quantities have opposite signs. So this is six, which is positive, and 17, which is positive. So does that work? Does it meet all the rules? No, this one doesn't because they're not opposite signs. So that means is k, and I, because they ask us for the biggest k, I'm assuming k is not big enough yet. So let's keep making k bigger and bigger and bigger until something happens. Now I'm gonna make a little educated guess here, and since it's uh, seven minus k, I'm gonna go ahead and put seven in for k because I think something's gonna happen when k gets to seven. So let's try it. So seven minus seven is zero, 18 minus seven is 11. So let's see if that meets our rules. It's positive integer. Uh, we track both quantities. It's not non-zero. The product, unfortunately, of zero and 11 is zero. So we fail the non-zero product rule. So, okay, k is still not big enough. Let's go to k equals eight. Um, now we'll end up with seven minus eight is negative one. 18 minus eight is 10. Right, so does this meet all our rules? Uh, positive integer k, we track both quantities, it's non-zero, the quantities of opposite signs. Does it work? Yes. But beware, you might be tempted to pick the correct to pick the answer eight right now. But remember the question didn't ask you which, what is the smallest value of k that works? They said, what is the biggest possible value for k that works? So if nine works, we need to go with nine. So I'm actually gonna go zoom um, all the way up. Let's pick 18. And see if that works because that's the biggest one we have an option to us um, 7 minus 18 is uh, negative 11 18 minus 18 is 0 so this fails because it's not non-zero so let's scale it back one let's go with 17 so we'll get negative 10 we'll get 1 so that is positive integer for k we track both quantities it's non-zero the quantities have opposite signs, and it's the biggest K that we can come up with. So this is your correct answer.